Hey all, welcome to Circle of Tone and today I'm going to show you a guitar which you can find used for $40 and also uh, with a few upgrades, about $20 worth of upgrades if you put on a bone bridge and change the strings it's going to sound as good as a $2,000 guitar and uh, let's get to it, uh, please subscribe I've got about as many videos uploaded as I do subscribers so uh, usually I say this at the end but uh, if this stuff helps you out, uh, hit that bell, hit that like, hit that subscribe. So here we go. I'm just going to do it in one shot. Uh, this microphone is uh, also, uh, you can pick this up for 50 bucks used or uh, 90 bucks new. And uh, I can show you some links of how to get it. And I actually, before, I want to get to it quickly, but before I started, I actually used my more expensive mic, which is just out of shot. And I actually preferred this one. So and that's a $700 microphone. All right, I don't even know what I'm going to play. This is prepar preparation, bitches. Preparation H. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick adjustment of the input gain and I'm going to play some more delicate uh, low gain stuff. Okay, it's going to be some more delicate, intricate playing. I can do it.
Okay, this one is the bathroom. Uh, you can probably tell this is a smaller bathroom than the other one that I did. And obviously a lot of reverberation from the tile. It's a small bathroom so it's not going to be like ridiculous. Uh, I'd say about a third of the room is tile. Uh, the rest is a tub and uh, you know sink and mirror and things like that. So lots of reflections, lots of effect. People use these things for effect. So uh, it, sometimes, you know, it's good to do backing vocals in the shower. So if you've got like four or five backing vocals, do two of them in the shower to get some natural reverb. I can't sing on the spot. La la la. <laughs> but you get the idea. So uh, let's see how it sounds. This is the room which was the by far the worst, lowest ceilings, uh, probably about as low a ceiling as you can get to code in uh, Florida for a room and it also has, uh, the this room sounded so bad, this got me on my quest for looking for places that sounded better because um, I don't even play guitar amps in here now because of how disappointed I was with this room. Uh, so I've tried to treat it, you can see behind me, there's treatments on all, all of these walls, so you can only imagine how bad it was before we started all this. So, uh, so I've vastly improved it, uh, spent quite a lot of money on it, and this is as good as it gets for me in this room. So uh, at the end of this video, I'll, I'll break them up for when I'm playing the same amount of hardness and the rest of it because, you know, sometimes that's why I played hard and soft and medium. I didn't really play soft at the end, I guess, it was a spring. Um, but I'll chop it all up, put one next to the other uh, in the midst of doing the same chord, the same style, and uh, see what you think, see if there is. There might not be as big a difference. Uh, I might be overstating it. But I'm pretty sure when the bathroom ones hit, uh, you understand, you know, it's a it's an extreme. Everybody knows that anyway. But some people might not know that your amp might that you don't like might sound amazing in a different room. Uh, so check it out. <laughs> it's guitars for sale, by the way. Beautiful uh, guild. And I'm selling it for like 300 bucks plus shipping. Now you can hear uh, I have a fridge in here, which is uh, the kitchen's over that way, so you can hear a bit of the fridge. Uh, you'll also be able to hear a little bit more ambient stuff, like uh, I have a pet. So you might hear the pet in the background. I actually have a, uh, when I play the louder stuff in here, I have a noise blanket that I'm going to put over the cage. <laughs> um, so yeah, this on paper probably is the best room in the house for recording anything like vocals or acoustics. Very high ceilings. The ceilings slant and they go in weird different directions so it's not a box. There's lots of soft things. Uh, I've actually, I'm not sure if you can see it right there in the corner. There is a baffle on the wall. Uh, there's obviously uh, curtains which I can close. There's, um, oh, I have bay windows here. 
which I can, you can hear the road from here. So that's another thing. You can't hear that, I've had an ISO box. So you have races. So that's another thing to consider when you're doing acoustic stuff. There's, uh, when you have other bay area, bay windows like I was talking about earlier. Okay, so you've got blinds here, which I can close. Uh, if you just completely leave that completely open, you have huge plate, win plate glass, which sounds bad if you have an amplifier bouncing off it, because it gives you a weird screechy high. So the fact that I can close those and put them at an angle, which then acts as, you know, it's like sound reinforcement, where you, you can actually change the way the room is. You've got to think about things like that. Uh, what I would like is to get that baffle, which I am actually making, on legs. So I can bring the baffle in and I can put it to the side and, uh, uh, you know, so that it'll keep reflections of things like large windows. I can obviously close the curtains. Uh, there's huge soft couch. Uh, we have pillows in the corner. So that it's, it's good, it, it absorbs the sound, so it's not bouncing around. It's got tile and it has wood floors. Uh, that's, like, that's good for natural reverb. Um, it might be slightly overpowering for some sort of things, but when you're right on a microphone um, for vocals, it's going to sound much better than a regular um, dead ISO booth. Uh, it's not going to add a lot, but it's not going to add, it's going to add just a little bit of character. And those are the types of character that no matter what microphone you have, it's not going to pick up a decent character. Of a, of, a, of a bad room. So yeah, this has tile and it has wood floors. Uh, it has uh, bamboo um, floors, uh, which are made into uh, just wooden floors, compressed. Um, I have lots of pictures on the walls, which actually break up the sound. And it's, you know, it's not perfect pictures because there's a lot of glass involved, but it's better than just having a flat wall. My walls are actually, the paint that you use on walls can actually help. Uh, if you, on my walls is a very thick orange peel type of effect. So that in itself is better than completely flat shiny walls like you might get with a high gloss uh, emulsion or something that has no, you know, no parts in it. So it's not like the orange, the orange when you put it on it's flat. So there's things like that you can, you can think of. You know, the type of stucco on the ceiling, the, 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 the more heavy duty it is, the more thick the pattern, the better uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to absorb sound. So you can think of, think of what is in your environment. Do you have a friend that has, you know, a, a room that might be good, to, you know, if you're living in an apartment? Uh, so why, why not record your vocals in, you know, a, a, a slightly bigger room, you know, so it's not quite as dead? Uh, so just think about things like that. Think about, sometimes, think about how many amps you've tried out in small square rooms that are just have flat walls. And they sounded terrible. And you're like, I don't like that amp. You don't. You don't. It's not the amp you don't like. It's the room. So you know, a small a, a amp in a small room, square room is going to sound like garbage, uh, no matter what amp it is, because the highs are going to bounce around, the bass traps are going to warble, so it's going to sound loose and it's going to sound really scratchy uh, when you crank it. So that's why a lot of bedroom guys they don't uh, they have nice amps, but they don't realize they're choosing the amp at the low volume. Um, uh, with the way the room is reacting with the low volume. So they're not choosing the amp properly. Uh, you know, they, you've got to, to get a sweet swap on most tube, tube amplifiers, you have to open it up a little bit. Not go crazy, but you've got to get the speaker moving, you've got to get the air moving. That's what gets you the surprises when you play. You get the surprises from tubes, you know, being slammed uh, and uh, speakers shaping, the, the, going through your back through your pickups to make harmonics. So that, you know, you've got to think about not just the, the actual uh, electronic side of it, like I usually do. You've also got to think about ambient things. So uh, I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, subscribe. Uh, if you didn't, subscribe. So you can hit, there's like five people that automatically dislike all my videos. Uh, and I know who they are. <laughs> but uh, that's all good, you know. Uh, Tone feeds, you gotta love it. And uh, but yeah, subscribe, uh, hit the bell, and uh, there's going to be lots of other videos which are cost-effective ways of getting the best recordings you can without uh, you know spending too much money on things like preamps and EQs and parametric EQs and compressors and all the rest of it. Because when you think about it, the top studios they have all that ridiculous equipment usually because of shortcomings. It's not because you get the best, you know, the best take and the best performance. 
it's usually because somebody's brought in a drum kit that's, you know, uh, they insist on using their own guitar and their guitar is buzzy and crappy and muffled and they insist on using corded strings and they insist on using their crappy amplifier. Most of that stuff is to fix stuff. It's to fix frequencies, to fix, uh, you know, dodgy, dodgy snares and uh, splashy cracked cymbals and all that stuff. It's not there because, you know, to everyone's has the, the perfect environment to record in. So you make your environment perfect and your recordings will come out much better.